In problem number 9, we have y is equal to 5 sine x minus 6, and we're asked what is the maximum value of y. <clears throat> now, a number of people, myself included, when we see maximum value, we might think of uh, calculus and using calculus to find a maximum value of a function. But this problem might be solved much simpler if we look at it uh, according to function transformations. And what I have here is the function y equals sine x. And what we know about the function y equals sine x is that it oscillates between negative 1 and positive 1. So the maximum value of the function y equals sine x would be 1. Second, we know that the multiplier 5 times sine x is going to affect the amplitude of the function but not its period, and it doesn't affect the horizontal shift or the vertical shift uh, of the function itself. So at this point, with just the function y equals 5 sine x, now we have a maximum value of 5. The minus 6 at the end of this is, uh, affects the vertical translation or the vertical shift of the problem. So if we took that whole thing and shifted it down 6 units, we would now have a function that its original, the, the function 5 sine x, had a maximum of 5, but that maximum value is now going to be shifted down 6 units, so it will now have a maximum of negative 1. And so the answer would be b here. Now, this is, uh, it's fine in this particular case to go ahead and use your graphing calculator, and we would have just put the function in 5 sine x minus 6 and with trig functions one thing that I like to do is to zoom trig which is option number 7 under zoom and you can see that we have the function here we're looking for the maximum value and all we'd have to do is do our second calc, find a maximum, and we know that that maximum is somewhere between 0 on the left bound, and again with the thing about the trig, a uh, zoom trig, is it breaks down your x-axis with uh, increments of pi over 2. So we know that's, that that maximum will be somewhere between 0 and pi, so for my right bound I'm going to select pi, and the guess, I just hit enter, and it gives me, <clears throat> now once again, I was doing the problems in degree mode before, and now I'm in degree mode when I should be in radian mode. So if I go to mode, you should see that I'm in degree mode. You have to be really careful on this, especially on a test like this, which w could go back and forth. Now I'm going to have to zoom trig one more time. Zoom trig. There we go. And I'm going to do the maximum. Option 4 between 0 and pi. Guess. And my y value, which you can see here, is negative 1. Now that's a lot simpler than using calculus to do it. Um, I don't think that I'm going to go through the uh, the calculus part of that, uh, but but once again, it's not that it's wrong to do the calculus way. It might take more time in this particular instance to use calculus than to not use calculus. We want to be good with function transformations. I think that is the main part of this problem, and also function transformations with trigonometric functions and understanding what happens with the, uh, the amplitude and the vertical shift uh, when both of those are adjusted. Okay, so we'll go on to problem number 10.